I probably had it all the time. Oh, yeah, is that red light? Red light's good. So I'm going to talk about um, nonprofits and for-profit businesses because these things are misunderstood. If you think about all the organizations in society, they basically fall into three buckets, the for-profit sector, the nonprofit sector, and the governmental sector. However, there's a big wall that tends to divide these in most people's paradigm, the way most people think. On the one side of the wall is the good organizations, the not-for-profits and the governmental sector, because these don't work for money. They have higher purposes, they're altruistic, and uh, uh, that makes them fundamentally good. On the other side of the wall are these for-profit businesses, which are trying to make a lot of money. They're kind of selfish, they're greedy, they're the bad guys. And this type of paradigm is doing great damage to the potential for humanity. And let's question the first premise. Are businesses motivated primarily by selfishness and greed? I'm going to argue it's not. First of all, business is fundamentally good because it is the greatest value creator in the world. Business creates, for-profit business creates far more value than all the governments and all the nonprofits added together by an exponential factor. And business is ethical because it's based on voluntary exchange. Unlike governments, which have guns and coercion behind them, business can only flourish by creating value for other people that it then engages in through voluntary exchange. Business is noble because it elevates our existence. It does that because to be successful in business requires many vir important virtues, such as thrift, such as investment, such as caring about your customers, creating organizations where people can flourish. There's all types of skills that help to elevate uh, human beings. And finally, business is fundamentally heroic because business is creating prosperity and it's for-profit business that's lifting humanity out of poverty. Let's take a quick look at some of the things that the for-profit sector's done. For almost the entire history of humanity, we have been poor. This is a simple fact that humanity has been extremely poor. And it wasn't until economic freedom manifested itself through certain ideas and philosophies that happened to co coincide with the Industrial Revolution that humanity reached a takeoff point. So that, I mean, look at the year between the year zero and a thousand. The GDP per person actually declined over a 1,000 year period. Now that is what I call a lack of progress. The for-profit sector is ending poverty on this planet. Let's look at some interesting statistics. A little over 200 years ago, 85% of everyone alive, try to get your head around this number, 85% of everyone alive lived on less than $1 a day. 85% of everyone lived on less than $1 a day. And yet, now, through capitalism, through the for-profit business sector, poverty is rapidly disappearing on this planet. People can't see it because they take only a snapshot of what they see, and there's still too much poverty on this planet. But I'm looking at a very young audience today, and most of you will actually be alive to see the ending of abject poverty on the planet Earth in your lifetimes. We're going to wipe it out probably in the next 50 years. Where does it come from? This is a very interesting uh, chart because it shows that the countries that have the highest degree of economic freedom are the most prosperous. 
Prosperity does not come automatically. Humanity's been poor through most of our existence. It's been economic freedom manifesting through the for-profit sector that is lifting humanity up and ending poverty. The nations that have the greatest amount of economic freedom are the most prosperous. There are really no exceptions to this. The economic freedom index of the world, the United States, for most of our history, would rank number one in economic freedom. As short a period of time as just the year 2000, we still ranked number three behind Hong Kong and Singapore. But the trend lines, the last 15 years have been terrible. As our economic freedom now, the United States has fallen all the way down to number 13. And if you want to know why the economic recovery hasn't been stronger, if you want to know why we seem to be losing ground, it's because economic freedom has been in the decline in the United States. And as it declines, our prosperity begins to decline with it. How about longevity? Do you realize people don't live very long in most of history? The average lifespan has been less than 30 years of age. It wasn't until about 150 years ago that that trend line didn't just create a trend line, but it's been rocketing up. Until today, the average lifespan across the planet is 71. In Japan, the longest lived nation in the world, the average lifespan is now 84. Illiteracy. Do you realize that <laughs> for almost all of history, we've lived in a sea of illiteracy? A, a, people have been poor, they have been ignorant, and they haven't lived very long. The, Illiteracy rates have been over 90%. And yet again, now we've reached this takeoff point where we've got illiteracy down to about 14%. And again, we'll probably wipe out illiteracy on this planet in the lifetime of most of the people that are here. Okay, so the for-profit sector business is the engine. And yet, there's no institution in our society that's less trusted than the for-profit business sector. I mean, look at these statistics. It's incredible. 81% of the population in America do not have any confidence in business. 88% believe business has too much influence over the government. And I, I, the Roper statistic shakes me up. Only 2% of investors believe CEOs are very trustworthy. Like, hey, I'm a CEO, and I'm telling you, I'm a trustworthy guy. 72% believe wrongdoing is very common in corporations. 79% believe business is too concerned about making money. It's not concerned enough about the responsibilities to the workers, to customers, and to the environment. Why has it happened? If I had more time, I'd go into some details of each of these. The world has changed. The world's evolving. People are evolving. But I want to focus on the motives of business. Are, under, are misunderstood. And we get back to the purpose. What is the purpose of business? Does business exist primarily to make money? Now, that's kind of the default answer. If you go to a party, a cocktail party randomly and ask people what the purpose of business is, you'll always hear, what do you mean, what's the purpose of business? Everybody knows the purpose of business. The purpose of business is to make money. Really? Is that really the purpose of business? You know, like, my body, I can't live without red blood cells, right? I'll be dead. No red blood cells? Dead meat. Is that the purpose? Is to produce red blood cells? Is that the purpose of my life? No, purpose transcends. And Business can't exist without money. It can't exist without making a profit. It can't exist without, but it doesn't logically follow, therefore, that that's why it exists. That's what its purpose is. Consider the purpose of professions. What's the purpose of a doctor? Is it to make money? No, doctor's purpose is to heal people. And yet doctors make a lot of money. They're very well compensated. Purpose of teachers, to educate. Architects design buildings, engineers construct things. All of the professions have to make money, and yet they refer back to some tr transcendent purpose that goes beyond just making money. And business is no different. The great companies, the companies that you most admire, each of these has some type of purpose. 
It animates them. The highest ideals that philosophers have articulated, Plato called it the good, the true, and the beautiful service to others, discovering and furthering human knowledge, creating beautiful things, the courage to change and improve the world. These are the great purposes that great companies have. Considering Southwest Airlines, a Texas company, I, people don't know this because most people just don't know much history, but in 1970, until 1978, there were no discount airlines because they were illegal. The entire airline business was regulated. All the prices were regulated. What food people could serve were regulated. Everything was completely controlled by the government. And do you know how many people back in 1978, how many adults in America had ever flown on an airplane? Less than 15% had ever been on an airplane. It was too expensive. Southwest comes along, they create a discount airline, they had to fight and claw, and today the figures have completely reversed. Now over 85% of adults have flown an airplane. Just curious, anybody in this room not flown on an airplane? Please raise your hand. Anybody? Southwest Airlines. Google, Google was created 16 years ago. They're just, they're still not even a grown up yet. Higher purpose, as Sergey Brin and Larry Page said, the purpose of Google is to organize the world's information and make it easily accessible. How can that not get you excited? How many people have used Google in the last 24 hours? Raise your hand. Even though there's a blue light in my pocket right now, <laughs> I can't imagine, I can't, you know, how I ever got along without Google. I mean, it's just, uh, it's amazing. Whole Foods Market, improving the health. Uh, I'm doing this talk for free today. I gotta put a pitch in for Whole Foods. <laughs> Improve the health of food, of, of the people, the food, and the food system, and the planet. This little map here, is sort of a how we think about uh, Whole Foods Market. You look at the center of this, our higher purpose and our mission is at the center of what, everything we do. And then surrounding that, like spokes on a wheel, are all the different stakeholder groups. And our philosophy as a business has been to consciously create value for each one of these major stakeholders, our customers, our team members, our suppliers, our investors, our community, and our environment, that there's this stakeholder interdependence. I want you to keep this in mind because I'm going to refer back to it. Okay, let's talk about nonprofits. Just to be clear, I've created five nonprofit organizations and I'm on the board of five nonprofit organizations. The first thing nonprofits get, they get higher purpose. That's their great virtue. They're all started with a transcendent purpose to make the world a better place in some way. Now, there are many problems that business can solve, but there are also many problems that business, for-profit business cannot solve because they can't make money doing it. And if business can't make money doing it, it doesn't belong in the domain of business. This is where the nonprofit sector comes into play because there are some things that they are better equipped to try to solve. Third point here is very important. Whereas in that original slide that I showed where you had government and nonprofits on one side because they were public servants, they were trying to create good, they had a higher purpose. On the other side was business, which is just a bunch of money grubbers. Uh, I reject that type of dichotomy because actually the nonprofits and the for-profit sector have a tremendous amount in common. And the thing they have most in common is they are both based on voluntary exchange. No one has to trade with a business against their will. You do it because it's in your best interest to do so. No one has to participate with a nonprofit enterprise either. That's also based on voluntary exchange. So they are simpatico in these two ways. Everything's not great about nonprofits. I know a lot of this from personal experience. 
First of all, just because you have good motivations and good intentions, that's just not enough. You gotta have more than that. You've actually gotta do something. You gotta be effective. And most, too many nonprofits are simply ineffective. They do not have good skills. They do not have, because they, they get enough money from donors to limp along. And as long as they have good intentions and good motivations, they feel good about themselves. Well, that's a mistake. Having good intentions is not enough. Yet, it's what you can do in the world and how you show up that makes a huge amount of difference. Ultimately, the nonprofit sector is also uh, dependent on donations. For, in most cases, the nonprofit sector is unable to sustain itself without continued inputs from the business sector and from individuals who have also made their money from the business sector. And finally, the donor stakeholder is often taken for granted. Um, as a CEO of a public company, I can tell you, you can't take your investors for granted. But nonprofits routinely take their donors for granted. It's like, well, it's for the good of the cause. Of course you should donate money. Everybody should donate the money because the intentions are good. But here's the really ugly part of the nonprofit sector. Guess what? Selfishness and greed they're everywhere. They're not just in the for-profit sector, they're greedy business people, and they're greedy doctors, and they're greedy lawyers, and they're greedy politicians. There's not something about business that particularly makes it any more selfish and greedy than any other part of human condition. I've known lots of greedy, selfish nonprofits, and yet because they have this higher purpose, they're able to rationalize their selfishness and their greed. And in fact, then they are very apt to criticize the for-profit sector as somehow or another different than themselves because they're working for money and the nonprofit sector is not working for money. Although they gotta get money from the for-profit sector, which is kind of ironical. Now, at the for-profit sector, doesn't run the same kind of risk in governance that nonprofits have because the stockholders, the owners of the business can ultimately fire the management and fire the board. Not true in nonprofits. It's very difficult to get rid of an entrenched board in a nonprofit organization. How do you do it? It's really hard to do. And it ends up being a tragic or fatal flaw for many nonprofits. So, I want to tear this wall down between nonprofits and for profits. They're both necessary, they're both important. We cannot create the good society without both of them. We've got to tear the walls down, we've got to integrate the polarities at a higher level. Business has got to give up the mythology that they're in it that primarily about money. They've got to reconnect with their higher purpose. And the nonprofit sector can help point the way for the business sector here. Nonprofits have got to get over themselves that just because they have a higher purpose doesn't make them better and holier than thou than the for profit sector. Money is not a bad thing, money is good, money is the lifeblood for for profits and for nonprofits. And once you tear this conceptual wall down about motivation, then you'll see that nonprofits and for profits are actually colleagues, they're allies. They should be working together. Whole Foods Market, my company, works with, God, hundreds of nonprofit organizations, hundreds. And we donate to thousands every single year because we know the nonprofit sector can do things that the for-profit sector can't do. And yet, we also work with the nonprofit sector because we bring not only capital, but we bring certain skill sets, certain organizational abilities that help those nonprofits to be more effective. Both need to become more conscious. Remember when I showed that picture of Whole Foods Markets? This is a stakeholder model for a nonprofit uh, organization. They have their core mi values and their mission at the center, and they also have stakeholders. In fact, they're almost exactly the same, right? There's only one difference, whereas the Business enterprise has investors who invest money and expect a return on their investment. 
The nonprofit enterprise doesn't have that. Instead, they have donors. The donor also expects a return on his or her donation, but it's not necessarily a return on their capital in the same way. Fundamentally, that's the only real difference between nonprofits and for profits. That's why I say they have so much more in common than they have differences. Now, where does government fit into all this? Government has this incredibly invaluable role to play in creating a good society, but it's a very limited role from my perspective. They need to set the rules, they need to act as the umpire for both the for profit and non profit sectors. They should only do what neither business nor the nonprofit sectors can do. And that's because government has certain inherent uh, uh, flaws. They have their limited effectiveness due to a lack of competition. They don't have competition within themselves. They do not innovate well. They, and they tend to have a bureaucratic incentives. They don't, uh, they're just not very effective. And so in the three-legged stool, in conclusion, the good society has invaluable roles to play for both the for-profit, the non-profit, and the government uh, sectors. They're all like the three-legged, three legs on the three-legged stool. By far, the for-profit sector is the most important because it is the great value creator in the world. However, it can't do everything. Where it can't make money, that's where we need the nonprofit sector to come in because the nonprofits can solve problems that the for profit sector cannot solve. If we tear down that wall, then you have the for profits and the nonprofits teaming up and working together. And finally, we have the governmental sector to set the rules, to be the, to be the umpire, and to tackle some very few problems that neither the for profit nor the nonprofit sectors can solve themselves. If we were to follow this type of very simple model that I just outlined, hey, there isn't going to be a collapse. There's not going to be an apocalyptic doomsday scenario. Instead, humanity is going to continue its upward climb. We're going to eliminate poverty. We're going to eliminate illiteracy. We're going to have humanity continue to evolve, and it can be done all in a very sustainable way. Thank you very much.